welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. I'm Monica McCain Sanchez. This is a regular program for Community Board 8 Manhattan, which covers the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island, the Upper East Side from East 59th to East 96th, from the East River to Fifth Avenue. Tonight we have a fantastic guest, Lori Boris. She has been on Community Board for a really long time, really a, a very active member. And uh, she's actually developed something is a real great initiative for Community Board 8 called CB8 Zooms. And I just want to break in here briefly to say uh, thank you very much for being here and helping us to inaugurate this series. And I also want to thank Lori for uh, all of her hard work in putting this together. So I just wanted to briefly add my own thanks to, uh, to both of you. CB8 Zooms focused on public affairs, but it's kind of reaching into new, newer areas. So, uh, Lori, what's been your vision for Zoom series? Well, thank you, Monica. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my vision for uh, CB8 Zooms is uh, multi, it's multifold. There were committees that were formed by the community board, which were issue specific, like if there was legislation that was pending or going to be uh, produced on the state level or the city level or the um, their politicians and community board members would get together and try to develop how the community felt about it. So there had to be a specific issue that was referred to, you know, that, that CB8 Speaks was addressing. Um, and I, while I certainly would like to uh, interview elected officials and community board members, um, it's, it's more of a issue oriented, uh, program. And, you know, I have to, I have to find a new word other than program because I, I know in the digital age, it's like when you say program, it doesn't mean the same. I know thing. you, you've mentioned that and it, I was trying to figure out I know. I, how to, what I is asked, it? I asked my daughter once, I was like, what do I call it? It's not a program anymore. And she was like, just say it's, you know, CB8 Zooms. I said, okay. Anyway, the goal of it is to have a forum you know, I keep going back to the word public affairs. When I was in my younger days, in my uh, my previous career, we always had public affairs programming. And that was, it, you know, it could be something that was specifically legislative oriented, but it could also be, um, you know, uh, there are too many bicycles on the streets or there are too many cars on the streets or something like that that didn't have a specific attachment to a piece of legislation. So for instance, I'm really into accessibility, um, and I think that coming up there will probably be a program where we'll deal with different issues of accessibility, both you know in transportation and in voting and in you know, going to restaurants. It's like there are a lot of you know issues uh, with that. So that's just an example, but we can take the the whole you know enchilada and decide you know what we'd like to do with it. The other thing that is really great, I think, about CB8 Zooms is that it's interactive. If, you, if you're watching the program, the program live, there are people who are watching it who send in questions. So I have found that it's an opportunity for people to directly address, you know, especially if we have elected officials, when we had Mark Levine on and when we had Julie Menon on, it was an opportunity for people who were watching live to ask them a direct question. So that was really great. So That's, you bring that up uh, because, you know, we have this program, which is oriented for cable. Um, it's also oriented on the internet, but, you know, we don't have call-in. I mean, it's very difficult in this, this mm -hmm. setup to do. We, we yeah. could do it, but it's like, this is actually right now we're filming on a Saturday around noon and people are out doing other things. And um, even when there are um, community board meetings, you know, well, I'm, I always think about the physical meetings. People have to stand up at the, the mic and they got the two minute timer. But what with a Zoom, it's great because they type their question out and it's it is interactive, but it, it's it's more efficient. And I think you you get more people involved. Yeah, it seems yeah. like to I, it, there's certainly the opportunity for that. I think that the the viewership, you know, if you want to call it that, will be uh, determined by like how interested people are in the topic and whether they get the word that the topic is being uh, addressed. 
Uh, this is a fairly new pro program. We've only done three so far. So the word is slowly, you know, slowly getting out. Well, Wolf Reichel's doing a really good job in promoting it. And yeah. there's kind of a splash page, which is really very nicely designed. And he pushes that out on Instagram and, and things. So I think the, the promotional efforts are really well thought out yeah. for it. Yeah. What do you see as the need for the Zoom series? What is the need for the public? with the Zoom series. Yeah, well, again, I think that, that the, the opportunity to address uh, people on an issue directly, I think is really important, which is something that, you know, they can't always do. I mean, as you said, it's true that if we have in-person community board meetings, which hasn't been possible recently, so that's one issue. But even if people come to the Zoom meeting of the community board, they're still, not allowed to speak because we just we, do, we don't have the time you know you can't you can't go off on a tangent you know and let one person have the floor for an inordinate amount of time because we'll all be you know there at two o'clock in the morning so it seems to me that this is an opportunity for the public to address their questions directly mm -hmm. you know to the um to the lawmakers or to the you know the people involved, so I, I'm really excited about that. It's like it's it's a a new like when I first developed the the uh, the thing, <laughs> um, it was I just thought okay well it's just basically going to be uh, CB8 speaks but without you know a lot of the you know like having to book the studio time having to book the you know the cameras you know all of the logistical uh, issues that you can come up with. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't realize, actually, that it is really a, an opportunity for the viewers or the, the public, really, to ask their questions. You know, it just it gives them, you know, here's Mark Levine. What do you want to ask? Here's Julie Menon. What do you want to, you know, which is really a wonderful, a wonderful thing. So I'm very excited about that. It, it just did. it came to me late in the game, you know, but but when I realized that it was like, oh, this is good. <laughs> You know, sometimes we, we have guests here, we, we usually start off saying, tell us about your background. And you've got journalism and education in your background. And I was wondering, what do you pull from that when you're, you're doing these things? It's different. I'm, I'm a researcher. Mm -hmm. So my, I'm always like, I have a structured questions and, you know, I'm, I'm very, very formal. But what do you think you bring to, to the Zoom series with right. your, your experiences? Right. That's a good question. I have always been in broadcasting and, and communication to me is the most important thing in the world. I, I honestly believe that the world's problems will be solved, will only be solved uh, with communication. So I, I really have a very strong you know, belief that you know, people need to communicate. And so anything that we can do to foster that, I think is great. And when you talk about uh, communication, techno it, was, it used to just be, it was kind of a one-way street. It was like there were the people who broadcast the news and there was the audience that watched it. And, and between the two, there wasn't much you know, back and forth. But technology has given us so many more uh, ways, different ways to communicate. And so that's what I really feel I have brought to the table. You know, it's kind of like, it's not that I, I was involved in a whole lot of technology in the past, but I was involved in broadcasting and I saw the limitations of that type of, you know, communication. So, um, so yeah, so I think that that's it. I mean, I think the recognition that like, we really do have a great opportunity to, let each other know what we're thinking. That's a great point because while you were saying that, it made me realize, well, this is a, a new outreach of Muni Board 8 uh, in, into the community because, you know, I, my personal feeling is not enough people know about the community board and what it does. And, and you know, there'll be a, a big issue and a, a neighborhood gets all upset and they come in and they go, I didn't know a community board was, right. was even existing and thank you for your help. Um, so um, I just want to call that out as it's a new method of communication. Um, this one is almost like what you mentioned, the old broadcast, like we're just pushing it out. You know, we're hoping people will, will look. 
although you know this this program is seen by quite a few people because it it'll be sometimes it's on on TV in a in a restaurant or something like that. So anyway, just wanted to kind of yeah no I mean mention I, that I know I absolutely agree with everything that you said and excuse me when you were talking about the uh, the one way you know issue of it it's like um, it really it, I think that the most um, I don't know if revolutionary is the right word but but the the biggest part of this I think is the fact that it's giving people um, the opportunity to to talk back when I I when you say that you did, people didn't know about community boards I I myself didn't know much about community boards and you know I. That is so surprising because you you know, are I, so knowledgeable. I think I think you know, and that thank you for saying that. I mean, I like to think of myself as fairly well informed and stuff, but I really didn't know until I was very active in the PTA of my children's school. Both of my children went to PS six, but Manhattan Borough President at the time wanted to get more um, people with young children onto the community boards. So the BP came to the office and, and said, you know, we need you to do this because there's no voice of parents and we need you. So that's when, and that's when I found out, you know, I was, <laughs> I'd been living in New York City for quite a long time. And that was when I learned what a community board was. I really had no idea before that. So I, I agree with you that we, we need to do more about pushing our our existence <laughs> out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there have been three really great interviews. <laughs> Thank you. The first one was called COVID-19 New York City Reopening with Mark Levine, who was at that point New York City Council member, chair of the City Council Health Committee. He's well known for his knowledge of public health issues and the pandemic, who is now the borough president. And the show took place in September, and I just watched it, and it's relevant right now. You could have done this yesterday. Yep. It's just Omicron wasn't mentioned, but it's still the, the same issues. Kind of not specifically on Zoom, but maybe it is. But where do you think COVID is going? What do you think you can communicate with the Zoom series? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a really good question. I personally think that we're in the new normal. You know, we're never, I hear people saying like, oh, well, when we get back to normal, I don't think we're ever going to get back to what we used to consider normal. I think that the new normal is here and I think we're going to have to go, and I have no medical authority on this, but I, I should mention, but I honestly think that we're gonna have to go for like a yearly booster, you know, just like you go for a yearly flu shot, we'll probably go for a yearly COVID shot. Um, and I think that we will wear masks in public a lot more than we were ever expecting to. I traveled in China a few years ago and and everybody wore masks. This is you know way before COVID, but everybody everybody wore a mask, and I didn't really understand it. But you know that's what it is. It's like so. Um, so I think that it's going to be part of our existence for for a good long time. And and we just we need to um, uh, stay stay current with the information because it changes so many times. It was a funny thing. Mark Levine. The way that I got to know Mark Levine was that I, I moved for a brief amount of time to Washington Heights, and he was actually my councilman at the time. And so I got to know him, and the fact that he was on the, he was the chair of the health committee was fabulous because anytime there was a question about anything having to do with COVID, uh, I, could, I knew that he was a source of information. And it was just funny because my, um, I have a son who's, you know, a grown son who is, you know, fairly active, in uh, things and and I was talking to him about something about either getting a shot or getting a mask or getting a test. I didn't even know when this was. And at one point he said to me, mom, how do you know all this stuff? You're like the only person who knows all of this stuff. And I said, Mark Levine. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you for those kind words and that kind introduction. It means a lot. I'm really grateful to have gotten to know Mark. And I want to commend you for that. And actually that, that really sets a good example that people should know who their city council person Absolutely. is. Uh, recently in our building, we were getting our residents organized to fight the blood center tower. And one of our residents who is over 90 and lived in the building since the 1960s, he said, I never paid attention to the city council. 
until you brought this up. Yep. But yeah, so that's a really good example to set. Yeah, they have a great, a great impact on our daily lives. And so it's our responsibility to let them know how we feel, you know, what we think. They're, they, they work for us, you know? <laughs> That's right. People forget that, you know, they, they get intimidated and they're like, oh, I don't know, I'm a little afraid, what do we do? It's like, they work for us. You're the boss. <laughs> then a second program you did was the interview with the co-chairs of Social Justice Committee, which is a relatively new committee. Sandrea Coleman and Sarah Chu, they have a radically different mission than a lot of the other committees, I think. I really leaned in on the discussion about the talk. The talk you know, that black and brown families have to have with their children, which is completely different about how you behave in front of law enforcement. Explain to the, the audience what the talk okay. is. Yes, thank you so much for asking that question. I learned about the talk from a book, actually a film. I, you know, I, I watch a lot of films more than the books that I read. However, there was a, a book published in 2017. It was the first novel by a woman named Angie Thomas. And I didn't read the book, but I did see the movie. And I would encourage people to go on YouTube, and YouTube has 10 minutes of the opening of the movie. And that explains the talk. When I was a young mother, I would say to my children, if you are ever in trouble, you know, you can go to a police officer and a police officer will help you, okay? But I'm white, so I can say that. That is not what uh, parents of color say to their children. The parents of color say things like, um, if you're approached by the police, you need to stay calm and you need to keep your hands on the steering wheel because if they don't see your hands, that could cause trouble. And I, it was stunning to me, you know, that because I never realized what a difference in perspective there is between, you know, depending on who you are. You know, if you're a white person, you have a different reaction to uh, the police authorities than if you're a black or brown person. It's just the way it is. When the Social Justice Committee was talking about police um, issues, that's when I said that, and, and I just, you know, realized there's a lot of white people who do not know, but, you know, rest assured that every black and brown person who's hearing this right now knows exactly what it is. You know, they need to have a talk with their children to keep them safe. Another thing about that program was so great. It was a really good introduction to that committee, because sometimes you'll go to committee meetings and they, they're diving right into one specific issue. This kind of talk broadly what they're all about. It was introducing you know, us into, into um, what they're trying to do with the Social Justice Committee. Mm -hmm. The most recent program you did was newly elected city council person, Julie Menon, and that was a lot of Q&A. That was pretty exciting to do. Yeah, and she just ran with it. She just like picked up and ran with it. It was so It was, so it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing about the Zoom is that when you're doing a Zoom, they can see your guest and you can see the uh, questions that are being submitted. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. It really was. And I she mean... answered every question. You know, I, I, well, I am of the, from like the old broadcasting school of like, you know, well, you don't have to ask every question. You know, it's possible you can like edit out the ones that you don't think are, you know, appropriate but she answered every question. And so did Mark. Yeah. Mark did the same thing. It's like whenever, you know, questions came up, they wanted to answer them. So that was fabulous. Yeah, no, really, really was great. I don't know, have you got any other topics on deck for, for the <laughs> Zoom series? Yeah, we're, we're working on a few. I mean, I mentioned accessibility, which mm -hmm. I really think needs attention um, on in Community Board 8. Um, we have a serious problem. I mean, it, you know, full disclosure, I have multiple sclerosis. I've had it for 20 years and I'm in, you know, pretty good shape. But there's always in the back of my mind, you know, the question of like, well, what if I wasn't, you know? And so I really have made it my life's commitment to work on accessibility, you know, I mean, for the general public, you know, but, and also we're, you know, the, we have an aging population. So there are a lot of issues. 
And so I am working with uh, another person with a disability on uh, a program either about voting rights for the ex for accessibility or for or for both uh, or transportation, mm -hmm. which is you know really good. So we're going to try to do that. Um, we're also going to try and do Roosevelt Island. It was mentioned to me that there are a couple of things coming up on Roosevelt Island. There's a um, uh, there's a 10 year uh, anniversary of Four Freedoms Park, which is coming, and they're having a big celebration. So uh, there's that, and there is a group of disabled poets on Roosevelt Island who just won a prestigious award. And I saw their video and it's fabulous. So we're going to talk to them. And the beauty of this is that it doesn't take as much arranging and setting up and logistical nightmares as I'm sure you yeah, know. This is right? complicated. It does for this, right? It's, yeah. That's what technology has done for us. It really has made things much, much easier. Yeah. So yeah. And, you know, if anybody has an idea, by the way, I'm an open book in terms of like, if you want to get in touch with me, and that's how some of these came about, mm -hmm. is that, you know, people just approached me and said, oh, what do you think about this? So if you have an idea, if you have an idea about that, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, call me at the board office and uh, we'll try to get it done. Great. It's not like you have a, a formal schedule, like there's one Zoom a month is when the topic comes up. You Right. You'll... And I would like to... Uh, have a more regular schedule only because it allows people to know. We used to talk about appointments in television, like that you'd have an appointment mm -hmm. to do a, a show. And uh, and that was good. So people knew that like, you know, Thursday at five o'clock, you know, this is going to be on. Um, so that would be great. But it's but it's not necessary. Like it's not necessary to do the program. It's like the only thing that is required is that our District Manager Will, who's the wizard behind the, uh, he's uh, done a great he's job. Great. So he, array, you know, says when he can do it because there can't be two things on the website at, at the same time. So, but that's the only thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's kind of an open, you know. You're still in development. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> still development. So uh, a little bit more about your your formal CBA life is. So how long have you been on the board, and, and what know. what committees have you been Unbelievable. with? Unbelievable. I've been on the board, I can't believe that I say this, 13 years. That's like a really long time. Wow. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's 14 years now because we're in 2022, 20, right? So, yeah, it's actually 14 years. And I started as uh, a member of the communications committee. And then I was a secretary of the board. And then um, I became the co-chair of the technology committee which I always thought was a little funny because, you know, like I used to say that uh, um, w when they get done laughing, you know, my, my, my children would, <laughs> would say, you know, mom, I don't know that you're really qualified to be the co-chair of the <laughs> technology committee. Uh, but uh, so, and, and the reason for that, that I was the co-chair of the, or asked to be the co-chair of the technology committee was because I established a Facebook presence for Community Board 8. You know, before I came here, there was no social media. So that is the thing that I am the proudest of, by the way. Um, uh, my thing at uh, um, CB8 is that I put them on the map. You know, I put them on the social media map. So that was great. But anyway, so that's the technology committee. And then I was also the co-chair of the Women and Families Committee, mm -hmm. which was another committee that was like at its inception, you know, um, we started. And we had a little bit of a rough time uh, with it, but uh, we did do a- uh, uh, Forum. We, yeah, forum, that's what it is. Yeah. We had a forum, thank you, on women's pay equity, you know, and, and how to, because, you know, we all know that like women get paid, you know, whatever, I don't know what the statistic is these days, maybe 86 cents to the dollar of men or whatever, but, um, you know, and talk about strategies, you know, to to change that. So it was very good. What other community groups have you been involved with? Well, I mean, when I was, it's, it's basically like what's going on in my life, right? So when I was, when I was um, a writer, like when I was at work, I, I was, when I was working, I was um, in the, uh, the union of the Writers Guild of America, you know, I, and I was, you know, on the negotiating committee and, 
you know, I, ha I held office at the Writers Guild of America. And uh, then I had children. And I, so I got into the PTA uh, business. And, uh, and then I got, was diagnosed with MS. And I became the district activist leader for the Multiple Sclerosis Society. You know, so it's just like, I mean, I don't take any credit. It's just like, you know, what, what I can do, you know, to further, you know, my, uh, my, my stuff, you know. I do think, though, that it's important for everybody to, to do the things that they feel passionate about. You know, it's like, don't, if you don't feel passion, don't do it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's basically whatever's going on in my life, you know. Uh, and I, I, I have a funny, um, but not a bumper sticker, like a magnet on my door mm -hmm. at home that says, uh, stop me before I volunteer again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, just, just the other day, I was at uh, a meeting. Uh, I, I'm, in, I'm also in the Four Freedoms Political Party, uh, political, not political party, political club. And, um, and they, they drafted me to, to, um, to run for judicial delegate. I was, I was like, no, I'm busy. You know, it's that thing about how you want something to get done, ask a busy person. So... I, you know, and I'll say what my father always used to say. I don't know how I ever had time to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a great conversation. Thank I really you. appreciate it. And we're looking forward to seeing the, the next uh, program. From, Thank you from so much. Program, whatever you're going to call it from yeah. um, C8 Zoom. So anyway, so thanks everyone for being here tonight. And um, remember to go to the website for Community Board Ada Manhattan, cbam.com. And also our Facebook page. That's right. <laughs> and I think we're on Instagram now, too. So we're all over the place. And thank you, everyone. Twitter. <laughs> and Twitter. Yeah. So um, we'll look forward to seeing you again at a, at a community board meeting. <laughs>